Hello. So today we're going to do a ship mechanic or vehicle mechanic. It's what I'm going to do can be used for cars or something similar to the boats in Minecraft, that kind of thing. So it's very, very simple maneuvering and yeah. So what I've done is I've already created the project and made the interface and I've already done the input stuff and the line trace because that's just tedious and it's the kind of thing that's done everywhere and there's already tutorials for that anyway so otherwise this whole video is going to be nearly an hour long so what we've got here is we've got a line trace that spits out into this out hit variable I've inverted the y-axis and I've made two inputs, one for climb and one for dive, because we actually do need those if you want to be able to fly it like an actual ship. And that's about it. So what we're going to do, the first thing we need is a ship. So we're going to create this as a actor. I'm going to call it flying... It's called flying carpet. Some mechanics for that sort of like it seems to it fits. And what we're gonna do with the cube is sort of it's the closest thing. I, I can't call this a ship, but I can call it a flying carpet. And it's a bit more realistic. I'm not modeling a whole ship just for this. Uh, let's go with two for that, just to make it a bit more, there you go, fun flying carpet in the shape of a blue cube, yeah, okay, save that, and we've got the event graph, so we need to go in here and under class settings, we need to bring in the interface because that's how we're going to talk to this thing. And because of the way we're going to do this, it means that we can have multiples of these flying carpets or objects or vehicles or ships, whatever it's going to call, whatever it's going to be, actually in the scene. And you can just jump from one to the other, which is kind of interesting. So we've got that. We're going to implement event, which I've called add momentum, by the way, because that's actually literally what we're doing we're just adding momentum to this object we're not actually doing much and this is part of the simplicity of it so we've got that so what we're going to do is we're going to start organizing the inputs for this thing so we'll start at the bottom with climb and dive Actually, what we need to do is we need to do the selection part first, which is going to come off this. So we need to be able to select the ship that we want to ride, that we want to drive around. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it from the out head. So down the bottom here, we're going to drag out head. And we're going to split it. Like so. Now we need a key to use, so we're just going to use a... I, just, I haven't set up an input for it, and I'm not going to. It's not relevant. Well, it is relevant, but it's not that relevant. So we got the E key here. Now we're going to... We need a variable to hold the reference. Um, and we'll just call it ship ref. Under the type, we want actor. Scroll down just a little bit. Actor, object reference. And we're just going to drag it into here. I think I need to get a new mouse because it's not holding the key down. The button is becoming really weird. I've successfully worn out a mouse again. Okay. So coming off the out hit actor, we're just going to go straight into that. But we only want to do it if this implements that interface. So 
it's a node called does implement interface and it returns it returns that so straight to that if it's true done okay what we also need is a some sort of flag to say yes we're flying the ship and no we're not flying the ship because we need it to, to switch all these inputs all these ones here so all this not the camera input so much, but this one, because these values are going to get pumped into the interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a flip-flop. So the first time around, it goes straight to there and says, yep, okay, running it. So we're going to just take some boolean. We're going to rename it to is flying. Set, set. So we're going to put this up here and we're going to check it. And then this one can come down here and it's not going to be checked. So press the key if it's a ship that we want that, inter that implements the interface. Yep, okay, we're flying it. That's our ship. And then by default, it'll just go this way. So if you run around pointing at nothing. I haven't put I haven't put any print in there, so print not flying. Flying. Okay. So it's just going to say not flying the whole time. So, okay. But that's that's generally it. That's all we need now for there. So we start at the bottom. We're going to take... This is flying. Get is flying. And we're going to do a branch. But is flying true... Take the ship reference and STD add momentum. So if we're flying it, we're just gonna we can then execute the the the, uh, in, the interface. Now in this case we're diving, so just in here we're gonna put negative one, and this will start making sense in a little bit. And under the movement input, what we simply want to do is we want to send those x and y values just straight into the straight into it into that interface. So get that. Again, is it flying? Problem. So is it flying? No. It's going to just run as normal. If it is, it's going to go into that interface, which we're going to get. We don't muck around with lines, but it's an endless trap. Okay, so we've got these two here. So for the forward momentum, we want to take the Y. And for the turn, we want to take the X. So these values, when they come out of here, are actually just either 1 or negative 1. So it gives you a pretty good, interesting signal as to what's going on. And those just get fed straight into the add momentum part. Now, 
that's pretty much all we actually need to do. Pretty sure that's it. Yep. Okay, so we're going to the flying carpet and we got our ad momentum thing. So what we're gonna do is we wanna be able to we wanna the W and S key is going to be moving it back and forward, and the A and D key is going to make it turn. Now, there's a few ways we can go about this, but the easiest way is we're going to borrow something from the line trace. And we're going to use that to move the cube forward. And when we move the cube forward, we want it to move and we want it to move and then keep moving and then slow down on its own long after you've pressed the W key down or the S key. So this gives us this feeling of it's got momentum and it's a big, large floating object that's got some physics behind it when we're not even implementing physics. And we're going to do this through an accumulator value. So what we'll do is we'll just promote this to a value, to a variable. Forward. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take we're going to add this value to this what we're going to do is take this here we're going to add it to that so every time this fires it's just this plus one plus one plus one or if you hit back it's going to be negative so that plus negative one plus negative one plus negative one so it's going to actually have the effect of slowing it down too which is kind of neat for the turn you can do something it, for, it, the easiest way is you just add that to the rotation and we're going to do this off that cube object so to add relative rotation split the structure and we're just going to put that straight into the Z into the yaw so we should have something we can actually show now no we don't have anything we can show now because I haven't directed into the into the world let's drag it up a tiny bit Hit that. Yeah. Okay, so there's our our ship. Are we not working? What's going on? Would help if I actually selected the class. There we go. Now it should work. Flying. You can even stand on it. And when you stand on it and you start making it rotate, it also rotates the pawn sitting on top of it, like me. So that's, that's pretty simple. And the method I'll show you with the forwards and backwards can also be used on this as well. You end up with a bit more of a floaty feeling. So we need to get on with that. All right, so we've got this. This is accumulating in value. So we want to start moving that forward. And this is where the tick event's going to come in handy. What we're going to do over here is we're going to take the cube and we're going to get it and we're going to do a set world location. Now to get the position forward from where we're facing, we need to borrow something off the line trace. So what we're gonna do, but we're gonna use, instead of using the first person camera, we're just gonna use the cube. So get world location, get forward vector, and just like you do with a line trace, we are going to add that value to a multiplication of this value.
There we go. World's quickest line trace. No, it's not the line trace. But yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this forward value. And we can just plug it into that. And what that'll give us is a. It's not going to be the best motion at the moment. So E. It's fast. It's like that's uncontrollable in every way. And we've got it's gone. Never to be seen again. So we just want to scale this down a bit by using a multiply. So yeah, like 10% of what we actually need out of it. It's, I got to this value through experimenting I've done this a few times now. So we can actually hop on, hit E. As you can see, we're now basically driving this. And this makes for a really good car mechanic as well. And the car's gone. Yeah. So that makes it really, for a really good car mechanic if you just want something that you can use that you can just jump on and drive around. And it can knock the player off. So if you're doing something like a skateboard or a flying carpet type thing, it's actually not a bad way to go if you want a bit of realism to it. It's You can do something to make sure that the actor doesn't come off. And you can you can do that by just setting the same position, setting the um, the player in the same position as the object in a in a, in a tick somewhere. But um, that's not too much what we're worried about right now. So, as you saw with that, you hit the key, and it just wants to keep on going because the accumulated value doesn't decrease; it just sits there the same. And that'll keep going like that till the end of time, which isn't a bad thing if you're in space, but we're not in space. So what we're going to do is hit save. We want to reduce this accumulated value back to zero. This is where the fun sort of begins a little bit. Depending on which side it's on, if it's, if it's positive, then we want to decrease it. If it's negative, we want to increase it because we just want to chase it back to zero again. So what we'll do is we'll do a branch. And we'll do two separate things depending on if it's at zero. So if it's greater than zero, we're going to take the forward value. I'm going to do it like this. So we take this forward value and we're going to subtract really small number so this would be like a decaying value so negative one sorry uh, yeah subtract by point by point one again that's a value i found out of just convenience um, a little bit of testing so and then we're going to put it straight into the set value again now we do the same thing down here. We're going to add an 0 0.1, and then we're going to get a set for that one. Now we can just plug these just straight into the branch. The problem that's going to happen is that you're going to end up with this value fighting. So it's going to bob between negative one and one every single frame the whole time and that means the object is going to be moving back and forth ever so slightly and this could cause problems so what we're going to do is we're going to have an option to set it to zero and we're going to do that by setting a threshold and fortunately there's a very simple node in here called nearly equal So nearly equal to zero, and we can even set the tolerance by, say, 0.1. So it's 
So it gets to that 0.1 and then it just sets it to zero. And what this means is we need to do a branch, complicated branching thing. Well, not even complicated, so branch. Because we need to then test this output. So that's there now so if it's nearly zero we want to set it to to zero if it's not anywhere near zero we just keep subtracting and that's it that's this that's the simple bit and we're just going to replicate this because we actually have to do it twice So that's all pretty simple there. So we hit compile, save, and we're going to run it. Just maximize that so we can see. So we're going to jump on this now, and what you see is it slows down by itself in a very beautiful way. Let me go forward a bit more. It still gives a little bit there, so we can actually slow it down by prematurely. We've also made a remote control car thing as well, so there you go. That's that's the very basics of the mechanic. So we're now going to do the climb part of this, which is going to be the exact same. So promote to variable, and we're just going to add the previous climb value to it. Just going to go there. And there we go. And then we'll just tack it on the end. Okay. So under the event tick, I'm going to do. Going to do is we're going to add this to another set world location. Actually, what we'll do is we'll just add it to the. Um, we're just going to add it to the relative motion. So cube get. Add relative location, and we just need to just drop all these into here because we need to preserve the tick. Take that, and we're going to take the climb value, and we may actually scale this down a little bit, which we probably will, but let's just see how we go with that. And again, we need to actually do something similar to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, get climb greater than branch off there. I wonder if we can just copy and paste this. Yeah, we should just be able to copy and paste it. Yeah. 
there, okay. All right. So if we're nearly equal, set it to zero. If we're not, do that. So nearly equal there, set that to zero and cross that over. And we're actually looking pretty good. So they can go there. And we just need to connect all these up. We should see the same effect now as we saw with the forwards and backwards part. In this particular case though, we're going to be using R and C, so... There we go. The only difference is the uh, values will be scaled differently because we've gone with a, la a whole value there. So if we go minus 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, that was actually moving pretty quick. So we do it from here. So E. going up pretty well, sort of. So let's just have that back as one. Sorry, negative one. Do this, we go back into the flying carpet. We're gonna do... Where is it? We'll put the scaling factor in here. Times a point multiply. You know, zero point one. There we go. We'll have a quick little look see at that. So there we go. That gives it a very sort of floaty floaty sort of look. The negative part's not quite working out too well, but there's why. We did it wrong. Just add that instead. 0.1 So now we should be able to just jump on it. E. There's our Extremely crude flying ship mechanic, or flying carpet, and you can even fly under the world. Yeah, as long as we don't. Hit it. So yeah, there you go, there's a very, very crude, very, very, very crude flying ship mechanic that's actually pretty good. So, yeah, just Play around with it a bit more. <laughs> so it's got a, it's, it's, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. 
So you could actually just take your entire model of a ship and just bring it into the actor and then you can add things on the inside that get the value, like get position values and velocity and stuff like that and display them in like a widget on a HUD type arrangement. You could do that. Or you could just get a carpet texture and just put it over a cube and make the cube a little bit thinner and lazy transport device. So, yeah. Uh, this is kind of cute. I like this. So, yeah. I'm going to play with this some more. I might model a ship uh, after all. I wasn't going to, but I might. So, yeah, if you like what you see, subscribe. Helps out a lot. And, yeah.